We are back with a Today exclusive. This morning, the harrowing story of a young American held for nearly two years in one of Venezuela's most no notorious prisons. 26-year-old Josh Holt was accused of spying and possessing illegal weapons, but his parents said their son was only guilty of being a U.S. citizen who just fell in love. Josh and his wife, Tammy, his new wife, suffered at the hands of Venezuela's intelligence service in a prison known for human rights abuses. But after a violent prison riot last month, a snu stunning turn of events, Josh and his wife found themselves back home. And guess what? They're with us exclusively along with Josh's parents, Lori and Jason. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Well, first of all, welcome home on U.S. soil. You're here. Your parents, your family's been waiting for you. Just describe what it felt like just to be home. It was, well, to tell you the truth, I, w I had a little bit of anxiety getting off the plane because... There were tons and tons of police officers there. Yeah. And going from being in jail for two years to walking up a plane and there's all of a sudden tons of police officers. I was like, <gasps> post-traumatic a yeah. little bit, right? And then I was like, no, these people are here to, to take care of you and to love you. So let's talk about what happened. So you meet a girl online, you're a guy who falls mm -hmm. in love. Tammy, you meet, you meet her on Mormon.org. You're like, I'm in love with this girl. Five months later, you go to Venezuela, her home country, mm -hmm. and you get married. And it seems like it's the most blissful time of your life. And all of a sudden, you're at her place and there's a bang on the door. Describe what happens at that point. Well, they, they came in. Well, they answered the door. She answered the door and they asked, the police officers asked um, if there are any men in the room. And so she says, yeah, my husband's in, in the apartment. So they come into the, into the apartment room and then they ask me some questions and then they leave. Yeah. And so we were just relieved, right? Because you hear all these screams and crying and... Everything is just crazy, and all of a sudden they come in your house, which you were hoping wasn't going to happen. They come in, and then they just leave. And then they, but they ended up coming back. They ended up coming back like a half hour later just to take me. They took you, and they took your wife. And we should point out that, Tammy, English isn't her isn't first language, so it's not that I'm ignoring. <laughs> I just, you're you're going to answer a little bit for her. But So they come and take you and drag you off to this Venezuelan prison. What did you think was going on? Well, I was, I was at first I wasn't as afraid because here in America... You trust your police officers, yeah. you know, when you're around them, you know, little kids are waving, mm -hmm. smiling. But over there, I didn't know that it was so dangerous. So, so you, you didn't know anything, there was anything to be worried about. So they say that you were possessing weapons. They say that you were an American spy. Any of that true? None of that's true. Okay. So you get dragged off to prison. How do you, mom and dad, find out that your child has been basically incarcerated in Venezuela? How'd you find out, Lori? So we got a, a Facebook message from um, one of my daughter's Facebook um, messenger, yeah. and it said, 911, Josh Tammy taken to prison. And you thought? And, like, and then there was like attached a, an article. And at first I was like, no way. I mean, we were just, walk I was walking in mm -hmm. Friday night from work, walking in the door, and I see it. And I sat down and I looked at it, and I said, Jace. Mm -hmm. And he comes over, and my heart starts pounding a little bit. And then you widen the picture, nice. and you can see all of his personal belongings. And I knew, and neither one of them were responding to me. So you, you guys are in prison. They take you there. How are they treating you? What happens? I heard stories of some torture, some mental torture. What happened in that prison? Yeah, so at the very beginning, it was horrible. And they put me in a cell that was no bigger than what a twin bed would be. Yeah. Um, they had covered the door with a plastic bag, so I wasn't getting very much air. It was super, super hot. So I was literally just laying on the ground, just in my underwear, and just sweating as cockroaches are crawling all over me. Um, they never took me out of the to go to the bathroom. So if you had to use the bathroom, you either had a bottle or a newspaper. You could just choose. And what was happening to your wife was worse. So what was happening with Tammy? Yeah, so she was just in a cell with... Um, 23 women, um, not, not very big. Was she, so, was she hurt? Um, they did. They actually, so they were trying to get her to go against me. So while they were trying to fill out paperwork to get her to sign things saying that I was a bad person, yeah. this type of stuff, um, and she didn't want to do it because she knew it was all fake. So they actually started to put her fingers into pencil sharpeners mm -hmm. to take off her nails, scare her. They tried to scare her with tasers. Two years this is going on. I'm thinking about weeks and months, and I watched, Lori, you and your husband go on television. You had rallies. You were banging on the doors of Congress people. You were fighting. But at night, when, you, when there wasn't the fight in you, 
like, what were you saying to God, to yourself? Like, what, how did you endure those days? <laughs> I got angry. There, there's a lot of anger. Um, but I just had to keep pushing. I knew that I was his voice, and I was the only thing that I that was going to be able to get him home. If I wasn't loud, if I wasn't um, bringing his case to the front of the American public and to our government, for them to push against the Venezuelan government, I knew I'd never get him home. Well, people were listening. Orrin Hatch, Bob Corker, President Trump were all listening. There's a moment when you came home, and I'm sorry, I watched this video a hundred times. You guys are in the room together, and you can see it. There's a hug that happens here in this moment that almost never ends. <laughs> Lori, what, what did that feel like, that moment? He was finally back in my arms. You had your baby home. <laughs> I didn't want to let him go. She had to share. <laughs> And I saw you, Dad. You, you, it must have felt so good to have him back, huh? It did. Well, Josh, when you were sitting with, with President Trump and with, you know, the Congress people, I think one of the Congress people, like someone yelled out to you, you have one life. You live that life. You go live this life. <laughs> How are you going to live this life? Tell me. I'm going to do what I can to, to bless other people, to help people through situations, hard situations, um, to help people learn to, to change their minds. Um, we're, we're writing a book right now, so... Through that book and through just talking with people, we're hoping to help bless people. Well, we are so happy you're home. We're happy, Tammy, that you're Thank with you. us. And we're so happy for your family. And I should point out, you have a posse over here. You've got your <laughs> brother, your sister. You have a bunch of people. And I know that they were all so, so happy to have you back home, as we all are. Welcome back. Thanks, honey. Josh, Tammy, Jason, everybody, thank you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.